What's up guys? My name is Andung and this is the Great Schnitzel Showdown! Here are the rules. Today I will show you how to make three different types of schnitzel from all over the world. I invited some fiercely critical friends so we can put my schnitzel skills to the test and find out what schnitzel style can call itself the best in the world. I hope you're hungry. Let's do this. We're gonna start with the essentials. You probably know that the OG schnitzel comes from Austria's capital, Vienna. But what some people don't know is that by law, at least in Germany and Austria, you can't call something a Wiener schnitzel if it's not made from veal which is the original way and the only way. I'm cutting my veal into thin slices, around a centimeter, but a Viennese schnitzel actually needs to be even thinner than that. No problem, that's what the meat pounder is for. They're very cheap by the way, you should get one, but can you see how the meat sticks to it? You can actually use some plastic wrap or a Ziploc bag to help yourself here. Much cleaner job, but I'm gonna go the old school way until all my schnitzels are about five millimeters thin. And by the way, that pounding, it's not just good to flatten the meat, it also helps us tenderizing the meat by crushing those cells. And don't forget to season with salt and pepper, but go easy, your schnitzel is hopefully super thin. Now, how big should you go? Because some schnitzels, maybe you've seen them, they have like the size of a car wheel. I think you should actually go by the size of your frying pan. Just make whatever you can fit. I'm gonna talk about this other meat in a second, but let's first turn that pounded veal into a schnitzel. You will need to build a breading station like this with three trays or plates. I'm filling the first one with flour. For the second one, I'm gonna crack two eggs and lightly beat those with a splash of water. And number three will be good old fine breadcrumbs. You can, by the way, use your old white bread for this, like an old baguette or something. Just leave it out to dry and then put it in a food processor and blend it or grate it. The least messy way to bread your schnitzel is the two-hand method. Check this out. With the first hand, I'm gonna coat my schnitzel with flour. This will be like a protective layer that separates the crispy crust from the meat. And then we move to station number two. Now I'm using what will be my wet hand to coat the schnitzel well in egg wash. And then at station number three, I can carefully use my dry hand again to apply some breadcrumbs. You can press this a little bit if you really have to, but ideally you want a really light coating. So be gentle or don't touch it at all. And you're done. The two hand method actually really does help, but you kind of have to focus and I have a lot of schnitzel to bread, so my technique will be all over the place in this video, just saying. Do as I say, not as I do, okay? In the end, all that matters is that we get some beautiful schnitzel like this. Now the classic recipe calls for the schnitzel to be fried in lard, or even better, clarified butter. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. Actually, be generous with the fat. I know it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but frying in a good amount of fat that is nice and hot will result in a lighter, less greasy schnitzel. A few minutes on each side are enough usually until the schnitzel is golden brown like that, and then make sure you let it relax for a second on a paper towel. I'll be serving the Wiener Schnitzel with a classic potato salad, as one should, and a quick recipe video for that will be available to my Patreon supporters, yay! But back to our beautiful schnitzel and of course the obligatory slice of lemon. And now let's see what our tasters think. I just had a pretty good schnitzel somewhere else. So you did? Me too. Oh, oh, oh. So the pressure is on. Now please squeeze the lemon on top of the schnitzel. Ooh. Yeah, the crispiness even when you're cutting it. So mine is even golden. The potato salad is pretty good. You have high standards. Yes, I do. It was really good. Very nice and crispy outside. A little saltiness at the beginning. Juicy. Juicy! <laughs> this is way better than the 20 euro schnitzel I had on the weekend. The crunch is good. Yeah. The meat is quite tender. I don't think I need the jam. You don't like the jam? But I guess the, the lemon takes away some of the crispiness, right? With or without lemon? Definitely. Lemon goes a long way. Mm -hmm. So everybody agree on no jam? Yeah. No! Clearly the classic doesn't disappoint. But schnitzel has come a very long way since its invention in Vienna. So you might have heard that not too long ago, Germany and Austria were not exactly safe places for the Jewish people who lived there. So a lot of them fled to what was then British-controlled Palestine and would later become Israel. And one of the things they brought was schnitzel. But they did change a few things up. For one, veal is an expensive meat. And in Germany and Austria, they would usually go for pork as a cheap replacement. But neither religious Jews nor religious Muslims actually eat pork. 
and that's why Israel loves the chicken schnitzel. What we need to do is slice a chicken breast lengthwise through the middle like this. Don't worry, with a sharp knife this is easier than it looks. Pound and season just like the veal and there's your chicken schnitzel base. Back at the breading station we can leave most things the same, except we're switching the bread flour for matzah flour. So you might be wondering, what exactly is matzah? Matzah is basically just this very plain type of white bread that has been produced in accordance with the Jewish kosher food tradition. We're going to be using that and also adding some sesame seeds to the breading. This is a common thing in Israel and I like that it kind of adds a little bit of a Middle Eastern touch. And you know the drill, do the whole three stations of dipping for all your schnitzels. Now this schnitzel we're actually frying off in vegetable oil and not in hot butter. Actually this as well has to do with kosher food. Religious Jews don't eat meat and dairy in the same meal. But quite importantly I am also going to be adding some fries to this because in terms of presentation we're going the full Israeli street food style. I'm gonna be spreading some hummus inside a fresh pita and we're stuffing this with our chicken schnitzel and the fries. And now for freshness we are adding some Israeli salad. This will as well be a little bonus video on Patreon. This is the Israeli schnitzel. It's not. Okay, please friends. It's very street foody, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's fried and double fried with some <laughs> sauce and sesame. Maybe, maybe authenticity is yeah. another point. Oh, it, yeah. it looks pretty, but it looks kind of dry from the outside. Yeah. Fries are good. Oh, cheers. <laughs> There's not enough crunch. Mm, it's way less crunchy, but I like the sesame. It's not as juicy, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like how it comes together in this wrap with the salad. I wouldn't compare it to the Wiener Schnitzel because it's so very different. I'm not a big fan of fries, so... <laughs> what? Who are you? I think it helps if you put some of the salad in, yeah. into the wrap. Inside? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Overall satisfaction. For me it's just... I'm fried. It's too little meat. Mm. God. Oh, <laughs> can you do one with double meat? Bread, meat, salad, meat? Yeah. I'd like that. I gotta say, I was shooting for a more enthusiastic reaction because I really do like this style a lot. Well, let's see, maybe the next style of schnitzel will be more convincing. Let's travel even further east to Japan. I know schnitzel is not what comes to mind when you think of Japan, but katsu, which is the Japanese name for schnitzel, has actually been around since the late 1800s. This was a time of rapid change in Japan and people were adopting all sorts of Western ideas, starting with politics and maybe clothing and of course down to food. This is why the word katsu actually comes from the word cutlet. And katsu was one of those new foods that took Japan by storm. These days the most common meat for katsu is pork. It's a bit thicker than its Austrian cousin and oftentimes not even pounded. I'm still gonna give it a few slaps though just to get it a bit thinner. Now a significant difference is again in the breadcrumbs. We're using panko, which is a kind of shredded milk bread. It's very spiky and gets ultra crispy. Oh and you thought three trays were a lot? Well for katsu you need four. Because instead of the salt and pepper seasoning, we're drenching the pork in soy sauce. Yum! After that it's the same spiel. Flour, egg, panko. Oh and by the way, for my vegetarian viewers, I'm working on some veggie friendly videos, I promise. But today, on the topic of schnitzel, I recommend getting a regular block of firm tofu, placing it on a rack and pressing out the liquid with something heavy for a couple of hours. You lose a lot of water and get a much firmer tofu which you can then slice and prep just like a katsu schnitzel. Okay, on with the show. Fry off your katsu on both sides until you get a deep golden color. And for presentation, I will make a tonkatsu sandwich. Katsando. Yes. Katsando. Yeah, what she said. So katsando is one of these things where I don't understand how you cannot love it. And here's how you make it. First, get some super soft white bread. One of the few times where this is actually good. And we'll start with a layer of mayo. And this is actually not just mayo. Can you introduce this to this camera, please? This is called Kewpie. It's a Japanese mayonnaise that tastes much, much better than anything else. Thank you very much. Kewpie mayonnaise. Is that a thing? <laughs> that's, or did that's you just invent spot? something? <laughs> you can of course use a regular mayo instead but if you can find the japanese stuff go for it next we'll need some shredded chinese cabbage which i have prepared before make a little pillow on both halves of your sandwich and now we're gonna drizzle this with tonkatsu sauce 
You can try mixing 50% ketchup and 50% Worcestershire sauce and it will get you kind of close. Actually, there's one more thing. It's absolutely necessary that you cut off the crust of your bread. And it's actually much, much better to do that before you made your sandwich. Just don't forget it. And now let's see how the iconic Katsando is holding up against the other schnitzels. Maybe. <laughs> there you go. I have, I have a katsu sandwich. This is a pretty tada. It's it's a very pretty tada. Mm. It's almost too pretty to even try to bite into. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm. So, wait. I forgot the sauce. What is this? That was important. That was important, that last one. Really? I have Soft. the benefit of the comparison now. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, so flavorsome. Love the sauce. The mayonnaise plus the sauce. I know, amazing. it's good stuff. Mm. <laughs> I how to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> This also gets the juiciness high score out of the three. Mm -hmm. And the ratio of everything is, for me personally, is perfect. Spot on. I think the bread is just there to keep the sauces away. <laughs> if I had to choose, I would probably should still choose the first one. I mean, you can't beat the classic Viennese style schnitzel. I think it's, it's just so nice and simple. I agree with Clara. I believe the Wiener Schnitzel is a class of its own. I love the sides of the Vienna Schnitzel. So I love uh, the salad at the sides and the fresh of the lemon. When I did like the last one of those. I think it was just, I mean, you want meat. You want something in your mouth and such a mouthful of juice and meat, sauce and crunch and just... So it seems we have a result. Sometimes the classic is a classic for a reason. I hope you guys learned something today. My schnitzel game is good, but I know it's obviously not perfect. So if you have any suggestions on how I can do an even better job, let me know. And more importantly, let everybody else know in the comments below and we can figure this perfect schnitzel thing out together. As always, thank you so, so much to my supporters on Patreon. You know it, I know it. You guys are the best. See you guys in the next video.